If you have been following my channel or Christian apologetics at all, then you have heard that there is plenty of evidence and even proof for God's existence. That's wonderful, and I encourage you to investigate those proofs seriously and honestly. But today I want to talk about a different problem. How does the average person know that God exists? The proofs for God's existence are great, and pretty much anyone could learn them. But most Christians probably do not know them. There are plenty of honest and sincere believers out there who perhaps have never heard of the arguments for God's existence. So how on earth do they have so much faith in something for which they have no proof? And if so many people can come to place their faith in Jesus Christ without proof, then what is the point in ever learning or sharing about the proofs? Most people have never heard of the proofs, and many of the ones who have are also non-believers. So it seems that like learning the proofs for God's existence is a waste of time. Let me tell you as honestly as I can, that idea is both wrong and unbiblical. Unbiblical. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His internal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. When Paul says that God's eternal qualities are clearly seen in what has been made, that means the things that God has created. According to Paul, God's creation shows us the eternal power and divine nature of God. Divine nature means quality of Godhood. In other words, that that is, He is God. In other words, the creation clearly shows us that God really is God. And Paul's final word is translated excuse here. But literally, it means that without this clear proof for who God is, then there would be an argument against God's wrath for all the godlessness and wickedness. You would have an excuse if you didn't have the proof. So if you want to say that people are justified in belief without proof, then you disagree with Paul. He says that they would be justified, that they would have an excuse without the proof. According to Paul, without proof of God's existence, you have a good argument against God's wrath for sin and godlessness. In fact, that's what the, the real word means, like a legal argument. But this doesn't answer our problem. What about all the people who believe and yet never learn the proofs for God's existence? The proofs that we have work just like Paul said they would. We have looked at the things which God created and through logical reasoning, we can tell that God must exist. For example, the cosmological argument focuses on God's creation as a whole. It argues that the universe itself cannot exist without a creator. But most people who believe in God probably never learn the cosmological argument or any argument for the existence of God. So, are they justified in their belief and faith in God? Yes, they are. Take a look at what Paul said. He said that God's eternal power and divine nature have been clearly, clearly seen in God's creation, 
In other words, Paul says that it's obvious that God exists. So this is a strange situation. If Paul is correct, then even if people believe without evidence, they could find some any time they wanted. If anyone ever asked them to give evidence, then finding it would be as easy as just looking around you. Have you ever tried this? Have you ever tried to ask the average believer in God for evidence? Most believers begin to stutter and stumble as soon as they are asked to prove that God exists. Friends and buddies out there, most ministers and pastors have trouble with the question of proving God's existence. And they often answer it with things that make no sense at all. But the problem is worse now, isn't it? Doesn't this seem to prove Paul wrong? How can Paul be correct in saying that the proof for God is obvious, but almost no one knows about it? Shouldn't everyone find the question of proving God's existence really easy? Let us focus even further on what Paul really said. He said that God's eternal power and divine nature is clearly seen from what has been made. But what God made is absolutely everything. Think about that. Everything. So according to Paul, it's not just a pretty sunset or the aurora borealis or, you know, the ocean which prove God exists. It's everything. Absolutely everything that you ever see or experience in any way proves who God is and what God is really like. Every thing. Instead of asking yourself as Paul, if Paul is correct, ask a different question. What if Paul is correct? Would that, what would that experience be like for humans? Well, let's think about it. It would certainly be overwhelming. It would be an information overload. TMI, God, TMI. God is a being that is beyond our comprehension. God is far greater than we can possibly understand. Yet everything he created clearly shows us his eternal power and divine nature. In other words, everything God has created shows us who God truly is. So perhaps the problem is not finding any proof that God exists. Perhaps the problem is putting it to words. How can I give you a few sentences that form an argument to explain the proof for God when absolutely everything that everyone has ever seen, not just me, but everyone, everything that everyone has ever seen or experienced is that proof for God? What words could really capture this? Would it be a poem? Would it be a story? Maybe a mathematical equation? Maybe it'll be a handful of mathematical equations. <laughs> the truth is that this proof for God would explode past the limits of human communication. But Paul has told us that it's obvious, that the proof is obvious. So think about it. Humans have a knowledge of God which is obvious, but also difficult to communicate. If this is the case, then I would expect things to be exactly the way they are. Tons of people believe, and they would have a great deal of trouble explaining how they know God is real. Some of them may make an effort to explain how they already know it's true, but they would really only be able to pick out a small piece, a small piece of the larger proof. So Christian philosophers have done that over, over the centuries. They have pulled out little pieces of the larger proof, and we call these pieces 
the classical proofs for God's existence. But if Paul is correct, then there's actually more proofs for God's existence than we can possibly comprehend. You may wonder how the proof can be obvious, but so many people do not believe in God. Now that is an important question, and I have made a lot of videos on that. Please check out my playlist, Apologetics and Sharing Your Faith. Thank you for your time.